Let us offer our consecration to the Lord. Lord, we offer up to you this day as we continue this week. Let us be always open to the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Let us always listen to what the Holy Spirit is calling us to do and to follow the way that the Holy Spirit is leading us as we seek to hear the words of the Lord and we act on them. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Well, it is Wednesday of the 20th week of Ordinary Time, and we are continuing on with some of what we found here. And one of the things that uh, I've been looking at this week, we've actually over the past two days, were some of the things that came along with the role of women in the church. And we talked about that as based in the South American model, which is only, I mean, Catholic is Catholic. I mean, that's the bottom line. What is Catholic is Catholic. And so if they're doing things a different way in another part of the church, that doesn't mean you can't do them here and vice versa, because what the church is and what the church does is what the church is and what the church does. It's kind of interesting. When uh, the Pope was first named... I had mentioned, I said, he's going to be very different than the other popes because he is South American. Interesting also about that, because South America is very European, but it's also its own way of doing things in a sense. So he is uh, of Italian, the Pope is of Italian descent. I think he speaks Italian too. Uh, However, he uh, was born and brought up in Argentina. So he's got that Argentinian background, even though, just like here in the United States, he is Italian of heritage. And just like here in the United States, I mean, I have never been to Ireland, even though my heritage, my genetics is Ireland, is Irish. So I've never been to Ireland. The only place I've ever been in Europe is Rome. I've been to the Orient. I've been to South America. Uh, I have not been to Africa or the Middle East. I have a standing invitation to go to Israel. I have yet to do that. I'd love to. Um, so, uh, so I I know those parts of the country, parts of the world. I've never been to Ireland, although I am of Irish heritage. So, kind of putting that together, the Pope is South American, and he comes from a South American perspective. And therefore, uh, being South American, even though he's of Italian descent, that happens. And he therefore comes from the church in South America, which again has a very strong role for the laity as well as the priests. And so they work more as a team. So if you have a situation here where a person says, well, I am the priest and you have to do everything I say, that goes nowhere in South America. For one reason is because there aren't that many priests. There's only one priest for every 50,000 people when I was in Ecuador, and that was 40 years ago, so it's probably even a lower number now, except for countries like Colombia. Colombia is the... Uh, If you remember, a lot of missionaries used to come out of Ireland. Well, Colombia is the Ireland of the old days of today. There are a lot of missionaries that come out of Colombia. And uh, so, matter of fact, kind of an interesting little story. I used to live with a a priest from Colombia, a very wonderful guy. And if you've you've known anything uh, in the Latino community, you would know him. Uh, just a wonderful guy and uh, very humble. So when he was doing some uh, ministry, he you know for for some people, and he walked into the facility where they were, and people say, "Oh, you're from Colombia, Colombia, cocaine, cocaine," and he went and coffee too, <laughs> very humbly and coffee too. <laughs> so very interesting. And uh, a part, you know, but it's an important reality that there is a different way of doing things Catholic in South America, but it's not not Catholic, it's Catholic. And one of the ideas is when applicable to bring the same ideas here into the United States, because what is Catholic in one part of the world is Catholic in another part of the world doesn't always work at times and I'm going to tell you one instance where it doesn't music I love uh, Hispanic music Uh, it's wonderful 
But when you are in South America and you're listening to Hispanic litur- liturgical music, why are you listening to Hispanic liturgical music? It's because you're in South America. Or if you're here in North America and you're listening to the music f- and you're in a uh, a Spanish language mass and you're listening to the music which comes from South America, all that is appropriate. But sometimes what people try to do is t- take that idea and bring it into the United States. So what they do, I guess that's called cultural appropriation. So what they do is they take the same music idea and they bring it to your local church. Well, why doesn't it work? There's a reason for it. The reason why, for example, and I love guitars. I love guitars at Mass and everything else. We don't have them at St. Anthony because it wouldn't fit with our liturgy. But why would you have a guitar and an electric organ, those portable ones, at mass in South America. Because you are far from the city, you're way out in the the rural areas, and there is no place to put the typical uh, liturgical in- instruments you fi- may find at your local parish. You're not going to have a pipe organ there. There's no way. and But you may have an electric organ. You're not going to... You may have a piano there. You may have a piano. But you can see, those instruments are there because they fit the environment. When people try to do cultural appropriation up here of them, everyone thinks it's f- it's nice. And, and sometimes it can be. There's no questions asked. I have no problem with it. But what happens is it becomes a kind of a cultural appropriation and then it causes a little bit of division because people aren't used to it here and they don't understand it and that always presents a problem so you want to be careful of how that is done we're going to talk more on the other side of the break you're listening to saint anthony overnight from saint anthony parish in alston massachusetts I want to call your attention to Catholic TV, which offers great faith-filled, family-friendly programming 24 hours a day. You can find your cable channel at www.getcatholictv.com, and you can watch online on the free apps or check out the YouTube channel. Daily Mass, Rosaries, the Divine Mercy Chaplet, and the Our Lady of Perpetual Help Novena are all available online and on demand. Check out Catholic TV. Dot com. And don't forget our own website, catholicaudiomedia.com. That's catholicaudiomedia.com. We can check out our website, check out the archives of the show, check out our Substack newsletter. Please consider sending some feedback to us. You can also mail it to us, by the way. 43 Holton, H-O-L-T-O-N Street in Alston, Massachusetts, 02134. So consider that. 43 Holton Street in Alston, Massachusetts, 02134. So I was talking to you uh, about uh, different things that come from a South American perspective that are just as Catholic as they are here, but people do things differently here or do things differently there, however you want to look at it. But one of the issues that happen in South America is there aren't, uh, there's less priests in South America. Maybe the numbers are becoming more equal, but in the past, there were far less priests in South America than there were in North America. So you may have five priests in a parish at one time. And so the the lay people did very little because you had so many priests. But now things have changed. And now you might have one or two priests for several churches that are all part of one parish. Um, Whereas I I knew when I was in um, Colimes, Ecuador, there was one priest for the one church, but the parish had, uh, I think, I think he had 40, 40 recintos. So imagine this huge area that you cover, and there's a tiny place to do mass, and we'll say this area is 200 miles in radius. So that's quite a bit, and circumference is even bigger. So uh, imagine that you've got these little chapels for a section of that area in each area of this community. And imagine there are 40 of them, and it may take three hours to get from one part of the area, the parish, to another. That's similar to what he had. The difference is it wasn't all tar roads. As I talked to you, um, I think it was yesterday, it wasn't all tar roads. At one point, we would go through... I don't know if it was officially the rainforest, 
but it was clearly this very forested area. And we would go through that to find one of the uh, recintos, which was named Fortuna, in the, uh, well, it's in part of the Andes. And uh, it, it was an all-day trip, and th- th- there was a driver. So I was riding along, too, in the Land Rover that I talked about the other day. So the priest was in the passenger side. The driver was driving, and I'd be sitting in the back as a seminarian at the time. And he, the, the priest, he was funny. He said to me, I don't know how he knows to get there. I don't know whether he turns right at the 27th tree or something. But as you can see, that's the kind of a journey it was way out to Fortuna. And the way they announced to people that the priest had arrived who only got there once a month and never on a Sunday. So mass, the Sunday mass would be held on a Wednesday afternoon, for example, way out in the, that area. The way they would announce to people that the priest had arrived is they'd set off homemade bottle rockets. So you imagine, as I said, one priest for that whole entire area, and there were 40 of these little chapels in places called recintos, and each recinto had its own basic structure. So it had its own religious ed program. It had its own uh, place to do mass once a month. You had it had all of that one priest. So you could see that the lay community was very much involved. And if you watched it very carefully, you'd see that the priest would show up and do mass. There's virtually nothing else and do all the sacraments, but there was nothing else he had to do. He didn't have to set up for mass. He didn't have to, you know, everything else was done by the community. That was a very South American model. We'll talk more tomorrow. If you would like to support our program, please consider a donation to St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts. There are several ways to consider this. One is to purchase any of our merchandise, which you can find at the shopping tab at catholicaudiomedia.com. That's catholicaudiomedia.com. There are coffee mugs there. There's also my latest book, Encounter Christ in Your Humanity, all of which you can find at the shopping tab at catholicaudiomedia.com. You can also donate to the show directly through either the Donate tab, also at catholicaudiomedia.com, or by sending a donation through the U.S. Postal Service with your questions and comments at 43 Holton Street, Alston, Massachusetts, 02134. That's St. Anthony Parish, 43 Holton Street, Alston, Massachusetts, 02134. Finally, the best way you can support our parish is to attend Mass on Sundays at 10 o'clock and be a part of our parish. We thank you for any support you would like to give to St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts, the sponsoring parish for this media outreach to Catholics and other Christians in the WROL, WEZE, and podcast listening audience. In Cristo vivimos.